Rescue Data and Repair, my name is Dr. Ben, happy welcome to a new video and today we just fix an iPhone 13 Pro which doesn't want to power on anymore at all. Data are important, function is important, so we just troubleshoot that device and we will do a nice repair and get a working device after our repair. This for me looks like an internal NAND issue, okay? This one. And this one is shorted directly inside the NAND. We should have about 650 millivolts. And we don't have them 650 millivolts, so we have a dead NAND. I just started that video some minutes before and I opened it up with the uh, Refox RS50 and preheated the phone before and things like that. And then I saw that I forgot my mic and we had no audio, so sorry for that. So now I already opened the phone, took out the screen, and I already did some measurements, or one measurement, and then I recognized, okay, my mic is missing. So we have a phone which doesn't want to boot. The first thing what I do is checking at the battery FPC if the values on the battery FPC are okay. And we here at ground, and here we are at 340 millivolts. That's pretty okay. So the next thing we do for doing a diagnostic on that device is just connecting it to power supply and see what boot behavior wants to tell us, okay? So we just connect the right plug. Then we normally should be at zero amps. We are at 00606 milliamps strain. And if we want to boot, we're jumping to 108 and then back to six, okay? So that's pretty not okay. That's just we have an issue and we have to solve that to get a working phone and to get access to the important data. And it's always like keep the values which you see stored in your head for each generation. So always if a new generation comes onto the market and you are searching for faults, it's like you you don't you don't know before so for all the series before i just have the values in my head already and i know mostly if a behavior like that happens on a 12 i just just know in in which region i have to to search now i have an idea in this case but uh, i'm not pretty sure at all if i'm right so at first i just want to get out the board. Let's have a look. Here we have the board. The board, in my opinion, looks pretty, pretty awesome. It's a really nice board. And um, at first, I just want to check some values dire directly on the board. Um, before I can do that, I have to lose this clue sticker here. Okay and I store it here. Here we have the NAND and we just go directly under the microscope just having a look and sorting for ourselves in our head um, what could be the issue here. So what we can see here is the NAND and we go to ZXW and what we see here on lines. So the lines have no names um, in ZXW here, so um, the documentation is not pretty good at the moment, but not a problem. In, in cases like this, my first step is to take a look if, um, it's, um, if the NAND circuit is pretty okay, because such issues and my experience of um, other series could be a NAND, uh, a NAND line problem, okay? So on the 12 series, we often see that on the 2V625 two, um, two uh, line. And so let's, let us have a look if we can see something similar here. And um, we need to check it, okay? So I just get away the clue here. Okay, and we need our multimeter again. So I place that here. We are at diet mode, so you can see 
Um, by the way, within the next videos, I got another multimeter which I can connect to the PC, so we have the values directly on the PC. So just need to install drivers. And here we have directly, really, we have directly an issue here. Is that I didn't check anything before the first cap I do my measurement is an end line. Yeah, it's typically an end line and we have to inject voltage because I don't know which line it is. I just say, okay, we take one volt. We go to two amps. We take the board. We take our probes. We take a thermal cam, which is pretty important for the detection of faults like uh, such like this. I'm a window shop. <laughs> okay, and now let's inject voltage. Yeah, okay. Something happens here. Something happens here. Okay, we go up to two are pretty fine. Even if the one eight we could use it. Can you see that? Can you see that Tim? The NAND is getting hot inside okay so that's not pretty good for data perhaps but um, for repair okay let's see if we can inject at another point so we can go directly so we had it lighting up here okay but we have more caps directly next beside to the NAND under the shield so we have to take out the shield to see more, okay? So we just need to take off the shield. So let's get out the shield and let's inject voltage again. Okay, like this. Ah. So we need to go up a little bit. This for me looks like an internal NAND issue. Okay, so in this case in this case, we could get no data. We could get no data if it's inside the NAND, but we could get a working phone. In this case, we need to take out the NAND and let's see if that helps for diagnostic this issue. So we get the board into the holder here and now we need to scrape away clue and what's always important before you start with that is talking to the board like okay it wants me to do that the board wants me to do that but it said to me ben Please take uh, a beer. Best stuff. Okay. We need some hot air. So 
gently remove the glue. Don't scrape onto the bottom of the board. And now we just need to take out the NAND. Okay, we are done. The NAND is out. That was fast. This here is only a little bit um, of the surface, so we can cover that. Not a problem. Okay, so let's check if the line is still shorted to crown or not. So we go to dyed mode with one probe on, with the red probe on crown. And the short has been gone. So the short is directly inside the NAND and that's the second video Tim and I do together where we have a short circuited NAND or not, Tim. So we need to see, um, it's, if I count, we have the one and then we go to the second. Okay, one and to the second and we do measurement. Here, so this one. And this one is shorted directly inside the NAND. We should have about 650 millivolts. And we don't have them 650 millivolts. So we have a dead NAND. We have to replace the NAND now. So I will clean up the board. Then I will go to my table and just get another NAND from another board. I have one here, which I can use. And then we can just um, get the NAND back to the board and we need to restore the phone. Yeah, so unfortunately we get no access to data, but um, we get a repair, so. So my dream was, it's just a cap, we knock it away. We can reboot the phone. We have access to data. The phone is fully working. You learned something. I learned something and all is fine. Now it's we learned something. We will have a working phone, but we won't have access to data. Big advantage here in this series on a NAND replacement is we don't need a NAND programmer because it's not stored. The information we need for activate the phone and using the phone are not stored in the NAND. So that's an advantage we have here. But this advantage is we have no data. No. And I love to get data. Every day I love to get data out of dead phones. That's what I... There are two things I really like to do. Drinking beer and saving data out of phones, out of dead phones. Okay. Some more. So I love uh, my kids, my wife and everything I can do here for sure. But mostly my, my hobby is getting data out of dead, dead phones. So, we need to clean the board. And you see, always gently. By the way, if you want to join an online group or online course, like getting trained from me, you can just hit us up with an email to info at rescue-repair.com. Write me what you want exactly to learn. What is your skill level? What, what you are able to do already? What can you do already? And what exactly do you want to learn? 
and then we can do a quote for you and if we come together and all is fine we will produce straight content only for you and you can learn the things you want to learn so it's a win-win situation i would say so now we need to to cover Okay, and we need to use UV light. And now while that UV light hardens out the glue, I just have a look for a new NAND, okay? Yes, sir. And I'm back with a, with a new NAND out of another phone. It was already cleaned sometimes before because it was a, a swap one. But not a problem at all. We have to get some new, new solder down to it. You see, I just took it out with hot air on my table, just on another board. And um, the NAND was already re before. And in this case, I just need a stencil. A stencil, a stencil. The Dr. Ben is ready for the operation now. And we just have to get a stencil up to it there is a lot of of solar on the pads like you see but uh, we just add something to it and then we just uh, rebuild that again so I just do it like that and then we add some hot air here like this and then we just get this NAND back to the board so you just need to orientate we are here and here is our A1 on the left bottom side should be right hopefully and then we just sew down and we wait until the end moves at the right position and until we can give it a little kick So done, the net moved and now we should be able to restore that device, okay? So it's still hot, needs to cool down. So behavior on power supply, something I just want to do for me now. So what is if I connect, we need to go to 4.2 on 5. So if we activate the output, okay. And now we just, um, just want to see what happens if we, um, if we try to, to get a boot, just have to search for the right, And we still have that jumping issue. You see that? We still have to jump. So why we still have to jump? Let us take a look. Let us take a look for that. What about if we do measurement? Value is now good.
Okay, let us get to um, a mode where we can just restore the phone. And um, then we see more, okay? So, we change the NAND. Short circuit has been gone away now. The NAND itself was short circuited, like you saw on our measurements. So, we need to get the board into the housing here. Come on, here, like that, okay. Connect the cables. And then let's troubleshoot the next. Okay. Now we need to take a cable, a USB charging cable, like this and connect to the PC. And let's open up three U tools. So we just download three U and while that we just check for the charging current. We are still at zero zero seven. So on this phone, we still have another issue. Let us check something. We disconnect the battery. That's what I said, we are still jumping to that 108 milliamps and back to zero. So, um, but we need to see why we have that issue because we solved the issue with that, with that short circuited NAND. So we need to get down the cable here. Okay, that's pretty okay. This straw, six milliamp straw we have still. And then we have the jumping issue. Okay, what about if we try to enter recovery or the view mode? Okay, let us see under the terminal. Perhaps something heats up and we can see more about that. So we are still not done with that. Tim, this will be a longer video. Is this okay for you? Of course. Okay, let's troubleshoot that. So that's the old band and the old band is that. You saw it was shorted inside. So that's, that diagnostic was pretty okay. It's shorted inside. So wait for the cam. And let's see if we can. Okay, do you see that? That coil? Do you see that coil? And something pulses from from uh, from the middle uh, from from the top layer but inside the top layer okay so that coil here pulls okay it gives me pulls so we have to open up we have to split the board Let's go. we have to split the board we are still not done we have another issue here but what is safe is not data. Safe is that data is not safe. So, okay. We need to go to 230. We need to remove that here. Um, where's my mature alcohol here? So, if we want to get the board and the preheater, what is important before Tim? Lift, lifting away the glue stickers because they will break and they take heat.
Dr. Ben is splitting the sandwich board of an iPhone 13 Pro. You see? Almost done. And here we are. Done. Okay, now we need to know why this board doesn't want to boot. Okay, and therefore we can use for uh, an, an analytic, we can use the thermal cam. And we need to connect it to our power supply. And just to get a better, a better sight, it's like I connect it in that way. And because we don't want to get that 108 and zero, we want to pulse it to see. So we just connect here, okay? So if we connect, we can see it pulsing. And what we see here, Tim? Damn. Damn, that's a RAM issue on an A15. So you can see it perfectly here. So we have a RAM issue on an iPhone 13 Pro A15. And now it's about, we could do that here. Okay, we could do that just for the showing the skill. But the thing is, the customer wants to have a working phone. So even if even he gets no data, he would like to have a working phone. I already wrote him in, the, in our system and he wrote back, um, okay, for the end, data has been gone, it's okay, but he want to have a working phone. So now we have the problem that we have to take away the RAM on the top here, yeah, like here, and then we have to get a new RAM on two. <coughs> then the whole system, the CPU with the RAM gets a little bit bigger and you don't get the board fitting in a good way back. The next thing is we have to reconnect the board halves back together, okay? We use uh, 150 degrees um, between the board halves to get it back uh, proper. But we need to get the RAM on the CPU. So if we then solder back the board halves, it could be that we get cold solder between RAM and CPU. So we had to go up with the temperature between RAM and CPU to 217. This is risky because we could get cold solder joints between the CPU and the logic board. You know what I mean? So for data recovery, if the NAND would be okay and we only had this RAM issue, I would say, okay, we flip away the RAM, we get on a new RAM and we save data because we don't have to connect the top layer to the bottom layer again in this case, because this top layer works standalone for getting data. Okay, so not restarting every 180 seconds. So if this would be a data recovery job and we had a a working NAND, I would say, yes, we do it. But in this case, it's it should be a repair. And with a short-circuited RAM and that NAND, I would say at this point, stop it. No fix. Goodbye. I'm out and we see us with the next one. Here's Dr. Ben.